Hey there, sports history fan. This is Ross Bliley, the host of the Pigskin Tales podcast. Are you looking for that perfect, unique gift for your sports-loving child or grandchild? Or maybe you're looking for one. Well, I got something very unique for you. It's a racket. It's the ultimate device for the ultimate fan. It's perfect for any time you need to make some noise. What it is, is a 7-inch compact megaphone. It's got 8 powerful adjustable LED lights, noisemakers. Plus, you can design it all you want to match your team's colors. So get on out there and let's get loud. Bring a racket to your next game or competition to cheer on your favorite team or athlete. To pick up your racket today, head to MyRacket.com. That's my r a k i t dot com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. The Rose Bowl. The game that inspired the college football bowl season has a long and storied history. The stadium itself is 100 years old, and in celebration of it, Pigskin Dispatch is assembling some of the top historians and authors to share the memories, people, and events that make the granddaddy of them all the special game that it is. Enjoy this Rose Bowl memory from pigskindispatch.com. Football friends, this is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your place for all things great in sports history and your poor repository of football history. And we are so glad that you joined us here as we are really winding down here on our Rose Bowl celebration. We've gone 30 some days of talking about the Rose Bowl each and every day, sometimes multiple days, trying to cover each of the aspects of the Rose Bowl, including the 108 games that have been played so far on the New Year's Day weekend or right around New Year's Day as part of that tournament of Rose's uh, celebration. And uh, you know, we are really uh, excited to bring you another great episode here. We're going to talk about you know three more, or I'm sorry, four more uh, Rose Bowl games. The ones that took place from 2001 through 2004 are remembered in our collection of games in this podcast episode. But before we get to those, let's make sure that you are aware of our newsletter. It comes out each and every day. We'd love to have you be a part of what's going on in the pig pen. Each day at 6.30 a.m., we send out to your email inbox, totally free. You can cancel at any time, and uh, we tell you everything is happening in the pig pen. That includes Pigskin Dispatch, JerseyDispatch.com, Orville Mulligan Sports Trader, and many of the items that are happening on SportsHistoryNetwork.com as well. So, really easy to sign up. Go to the show notes of this very podcast or at the top of PigskinDispatch.com or JerseyDispatch.com. Now, the first uh, Rose Bowl that we want to talk about today is the 2001 Rose Bowl. It was the 87th Rose Bowl game played, and it matched the champions of the Big Ten, the Purdue Boilermakers, and the Pac-10 champion, the Washington Huskies. The game was played January 1st, 2001. The Boilermakers were 8-3 under head coach Joe Tiller, and the Washington Huskies, well, they were 10-1, having a great season under coach Rick Neuheisel. And remember him, he quarterbacked. Uh, those Washington Huskies. A few episodes back, we talked about him in a game that he played in with those. Now, it ended up being uh, somewhat of a one-sided game. It was close for, for a little bit, but it ended up being a final of the Washington Huskies 34, Boilermakers 24. And senior Marquise Tuisopo, the quarterback of Washington, was named as the player of the game. There's some kind of interesting facts that happened in this 2001 Rose Bowl. First of all, Coach Neuheisel became the only former Rose Bowl Most Valuable player to also win the Rose Bowl as a head coach. That's an important fact here. It took uh, almost 90-some uh, <laughs> uh, Rose Bowls for that to happen. And also, Purdue starting Rose Bowl quarterback Drew Brees, 
he had a bad performance in this Rose Bowl, not up to the expectations that we would expect Drew Brees after watching him for, you know, through his collegiate career and in the NFL career. However, he and Bob Greasy of Miami Dolphins fame, who is also a Purdue graduate, are the only two Boilermaker signal callers to ever start a Rose Bowl game at this point in time. And, they, you know, even though Drew Brees might have lost that, he and Greasy both won a Super Bowl game. So there's something that's uh, kind of interesting to look at from that 2001 game. But again, that final score was Washington 34, uh, Purdue 24. We go on to the next year, the 88th Rose Bowl game. It matched the number two in the nation, Nebraska Cornhuskers, against a number one ranked Miami Hurricanes. It was the BCS National Championship game that was held at the Rose Bowl. And this, and this game was played on January 3rd, 2002. Now, this looked at like it was going to be a great game. Everything pointed towards it. The Hurricanes were 11-0 under head coach Larry Coker. Nebraska Cornhuskers, they had their great coach of Frank Solich. They were 11-1, and it you know, looked like it was going to be a tremendous game. Well, it ended up being a little bit one-sided on this game, too, as the Hurricanes won 37-14 to over Nebraska. Ken Dorsey, the quarterback of Miami, and his Hurricane teammate, wide receiver Andre Johnson, were named as the players of the game as they had a tremendous game uh, hooking up for multiple plays that uh, really made a difference and blew this game wide open. Some important uh, historic facts from the 2002 Rose Bowl. The Miami was the unanimous number one team and Oregon ended up being number two as they won in their bowl game, which I believe was the Sugar Bowl that year. But also, this is the first Rose Bowl game not played on January 1st or January 2nd. Uh, remember, every game was played January 1st, except when January 1st fell on a Sunday, they moved to January 2nd. Well, in this case, the first time not played on, played on January 3rd. So just a little bit of a fun fact there for you as well. Well, that moves us into the next year, the 89th Rose Bowl game, played on January 1st, 2003, and featured a matchup of the Oklahoma Sooners and the Washington State Cougars. The Sooners were 11-2 under coach Bob Stoops. And the Washington State Cougars, well, they were 10-2 under head coach Mike Price. Now, this was not a high-profile game as far as ranked teams uh, playing for the national championship. The Rose Bowl wasn't involved in that at this time. That's why you had two two-loss teams playing against each other. Doesn't mean you're not going to have a, a good game. Unfortunately, it was a little bit one-sided too, as Oklahoma won this game 34 to 14 over Washington State. And Oklahoma quarterback Nate Heibel was selected as the player of the game. Now, some great uh, facts that came from this uh, 2003 Rose Bowl it said, with a paid attendance, it was only 86,848. It was one of the smallest Rose Bowl crowds in modern history. It was sort of one of those ho hum games because all the big games in the BCS and some of the other top uh, things you know happening on New Year's Day, those were the ones people wanted to watch. The BCS game was later on, like a week or two later, and uh, people really weren't paying attention to that late game on New Year's Day, except for if you were a Washington State or an Oklahoma fan. Also, the Sooners were so dominant in this game, they dominated the time of possession. They held the ball for 37 minutes and 14 seconds to 22 minutes and 46 seconds of that of Nebraska. Quite an advantage, it made a big difference on the scoreboard, 20 point win for the Sooners. We move on to the next year, the 90th Rose Bowl game, played January 1st, 2004, and it featured a matchup of the BCS number four ranked Michigan Wolverines and the number three USC Trojans. Okay, now we're getting into some things. These, this has got some uh, charisma to it, having these two top five ranked teams, top four ranked teams, actually. Uh, this is uh, basically a battle for third place. And the Michigan Wolverines were 10 and two under head coach Lloyd Carr, and the USC Trojans were under head coach Pete Carroll. So a very interesting matchup. We're going to have to start those runs of uh, USC Trojans with, under Pete Carroll going into the Rose Bowl game. Uh, it ended up being uh, USC was a little bit uh, too much for, for Lloyd Carr and Michigan Wolverines as USC won 28-14 to in this game. And Southern Cal quarterback Mike, Matt Leinart was selected as the player of the game. Now, uh, also... Uh, Leinert was ended up being the 
uh, Heisman Trophy winner uh, for that season. Uh, he was selected before this game was, was played. And some great uh, 2004 Rose Bowl historic facts. The Trojans wore a number 54 sticker to commemorate Dreen Rucker, an incoming freshman linebacker who drowned in July of 2003. So they did that to honor their fallen teammate. And USC and LSU shared the national championship title. Uh, it was the only split title in the BCS era. So another interesting fact there. And that is your, uh, your Rose Bowl history as we've covered 2001 through 2004's Rose Bowls. Uh, kind of a lot of one-sided affairs here. Not really good games, but some really good teams from really good players and uh, some really uh, fantastic history here on the Rose Bowl. And we hope you're joining us for all this great history. If you've missed any, make sure you go back and you can look find us at pigskindispatch.com. Type into our search box, Rose Bowl, and uh, you know, pay attention there. Or go to your favorite podcast provider under pigskin dispatch you'll find all these great, great rose bowl games we're doing them chronologically in order so you should be able to find them there also sportshistorynetwork.com has our podcast on it as well and uh, you know we'd uh, love to have you there and you can also find us at radiotroy.com uh, we thank uh, troy derengowski for putting all of our sports history network podcasts on there so special shout out to him and the rest of the gang there in indiana so till tomorrow, everybody, have a great, great Iron Day. That's all the football history we have today, folks. Join us back tomorrow for more of your football history. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned... We're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website, seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at Sports historynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you got to do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.